Mike Hennessy and uh, Dragon, first of all. Uh, welcome to Plymouth. Not very nice weather for you, but uh, you're used to it because you sailed the Atlantic a couple of times in her, haven't you? I have. We did the uh, 2011 Transatlantic race and also did the 2015 Transatlantic race and did Fastnet both in 11 and now this one. Why shorthanded sailing? Uh, easier to wrangle the crew. <laughs> really? Really. Yeah, it's, it's just the challenge. You, you need to have sort of the all-around skill set and be able to handle the boat and take on all the jobs. You did the recent Transatlantic, yeah? I did, yep. The New York Transat uh, left Newport and got here in mid-July. How was that? Fantastic race, downhill the whole way. I don't think the wind ever came before, 115 degrees true to the wind, um, and uh, very quick. Never really dropped below, much below 15 knots. What is it about Class 40 then? Great race, all-rounder, um, or great boat rather, all-around boat. Uh, easy to handle, uh, short-handed, uh, safe to take offshore and quick, and the competition's really good. The box will gives people area to explore, design, and then uh, at the same time, everybody sort of finishes around the same time frame. Uh, I think it was pretty uh, close finishing here in, in, in Plymouth, huh? It was, yeah. It, it came in pretty quick. Um, you know, the first three boats, I understand, were very tight together, and then we had four boats nipping on our heels all the way down from uh, really the, the sillies. Now your crew here, or your, your, your help here on the other side, um, he's a pretty well-known uh, sailor. How did you manage to meet up with him? So I'm told, so I'm told. Uh, we have a mutual friend, a boat builder in the U.S., and he hooked us up, and uh, invaluable help. Andy Beesworth, um, how is it on a Class 40? I think it's the first time you've sailed one of these. You've sailed more or less anything else, haven't you? Uh, it is the first time I've sailed a Class 40, and it's the first time I've sailed short-handed <clears throat> with four on board this one. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was good fun. You probably persuaded me to do it again, but I'd probably draw the line at four, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, because well, you're used to having you know, quite a few crew around, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, generally, I've always sailed on fully crewed race boats with you know, 12, 15 people on board. So it's a very different experience. It's a lot tidier on board with only four. A lot tidier? <laughs> <laughs> but no one, to, uh, no one to talk to even, let alone to uh, shout or send commands to. Uh, it was it was actually very pleasant. It was yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was it was, uh, it was good company and good racing, and it's good to get involved in all the jobs. First time I've had to do a spinnaker peel on the bow in in the dark, which uh, was a new experience for me. Take us back to the start then. A um, bit of a drifter. It must have been a bit of a lottery. Um, I mean, actually, it wasn't so bad. You know, there was a, there was a clear uh, clear tactical call with a classic fast net start with the tide gone on the green and there was enough wind to be able to manoeuvre the start. It was very light. Um, I was slightly surprised it wasn't more competitive down at the squadron end, uh, but we got the got a great start, winning start, ahead of most of the 60s, halfway up the Solent and had a few mod 70s asking us to get out of the way, which politely replied, you should have had a better start, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, a great start for you. How about was the rest of it? Um... It was uh, fickle, wasn't it? Um, yeah, well, it wasn't so bad. I mean, we we had some good moments and some moments where we're not so good. Um, we were obviously very strong leading out of the Solent, and first night we we lost quite a lot to the leading pack, um, but then clawed our way back going through the Sillies. Um, seemed a bit, you know, we fought hard to get through the Sillies and go to the north, and as soon as we got out there, we tacked and went hard south which was, uh, you know, obviously it was an opportunity to have gone south before and one or two boats who did that made massive gains. Um, I, I wouldn't say it was fickle, I'd say it was challenging, it was, it was interesting, we had all sorts of different conditions. Um, you know, we had a bit of champagne sailing in the sun with the Code 5 doing 14 knots and we had some classic, classic Irish sea, foggy, cold, wet, dark and, uh, yeah what you'd expect on a fastener, really. What was the rock like for you? The rock was quite interesting because you couldn't see it. You couldn't see it until we were like half a mile away. The visibility was so bad. But it was, uh, it was, it was quite fun on our boat. We, one of our American friends was overwhelmed, should I say, by the experience of going around the rock. He was so impressed. Wow, 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 it's amazing, wow. Not very British, but <laughs> interesting all the same. We had a good time then. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, back into Plymouth and not such nice weather. So um, how do you think you've done, all told, really? Uh, well, we're one design class racing and we were seventh, so we know the result now, uh, which out of 21, I'm sort of quite pleased. I think probably disappointed that we weren't fifth. I would say it would have been difficult for us to be higher than fifth. You know, we're in a 
older generation boat and clearly suffered when the breeze was up. Boat smoking past us considerably faster. Uh, so yeah, I think I'm pretty happy. I think we've done all right. We could have done better, but. Close racing, of course, in the one design. Um, they in, in sight for some of the time, most of the time, half the time? All the time. All the, all time. the time. All the time. Yeah, all the time. It was, uh, you know, even even when the leaders got away, that we were generally we could see them on AIS right until the end, uh, and we were in a in a pack in the middle that were scrapping all the way to the end. We came around the sillies within probably boat lengths of four or five boats. So it was, you know, we could have been seventh, we could have been twelfth or thirteenth probably at the sillies. So yeah, it was it was good fun. So, uh, to sum up uh, the Rolex Fastnet Race 2015, what was the best part? Coming out of the Solon. It's fantastic. Good to be leading out of the Solon. Always class to go past the needles, and it's good to go past the needles in that position. Notwithstanding that, finishing it. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, go and have a beer. Well deserved. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks. Thanks.